everybody. Thank you for joining me once again where people continue to be wrong on the interwebs. They continue to be recidivist defenders. They continue to be Sean Nelawani. Um, Sean is a well-known health and fitness influencer online who thinks for some reason that he's qualified to speak on basic uh, thermodynamics, energetics of biological function, and human nutrition for some reason i have no idea why he thinks he's qualified to speak on those things nonetheless he is claiming authority in those fields by making these kind of videos and therefore puts himself directly in the sights of yours truly and as such it's fair game so sean um who has quite a significant following online just short of a million subscribers on his youtube channel and he's one of these blokes that is a devotee, if you like, or a believer in the old chestnut calories in versus calories out idea, which he bases on fundamentally flawed and false information. Let's hear from Sean, and we'll do the usual point-wise putting him right where he's wrong thing. And spoiler, guess what? Yes, that's going to be everywhere, just about. Um, all right, Sean, off you go. What's up guys, Sean Nell Lawani, seannell.com, realscienceathletics.com. And in this video today, we're talking about the subject of calories in versus calories out when it comes to fat loss. So is this an accurate model to go by or is it flawed and outdated science like some people might say? It's not that it's flawed or outdated science, it's that it is fundamentally false. From the ground up, from very first principles, Calories in, calories out as a descriptor for the mechanism by which body composition is attained or maintained, false. Completely false. But we'll get to that as we deal with the uh, minutiae of the uh, so-called arguments from Sean. Now before we get into the video, if you're new to the channel and you find this information helpful today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to keep yourself up to date on future videos, and also make sure to follow me over on Instagram as well. You're much better to do all of those things here on this channel, subscribe here, follow here, hit the bell icon here, and follow me on Instagram if you actually want correct, robust, scientifically valid information. If you want to continue to hear misinformation from people like Sean, absolutely subscribe to what he's doing. Um, it's your funeral. Okay, what's next? Well, uh, when I'm not here on YouTube, that's where you'll find me. I post a wide variety of different fitness tips, workout clips, meals, and other updates that you'll definitely find helpful. So don't miss out on that either. It's at Sean underscore Nalawani. So this is a pretty common back and forth debate that you'll see in YouTube comments and all over social media where someone will say that in order to lose fat, you need to create a calorie deficit by consuming fewer calories than you burn. And then someone else will argue back that no, Calories don't matter because not all calories are the same, and depending on the quality of the calories you consume, your body will process them differently. Okay, so the first part of the argument there, that the calories in, calories out folks will defend, or try to, is they will say that it is an absolute requirement from basic physics that if you want to lose weight, by which they actually mean fat, which is not the same thing, actually, so they should actually call a spade a spade and say to lose fat, you need to be in an, what they call an, a calorie deficit or an energy deficit. Um, calories in, calories out devotees will die on that hill. They will defend that or attempt to defend that in the face of any amount of unequivocal, clear evidence to the contrary that it does not stand up to even the most basic cursory refutation. Nonetheless, they will continue to parrot that line with authority um, falsely invoking all sorts of laws of thermodynamics and things in a completely misrepresentative fashion. And then what they'll try to do to try and minimize any antithetical statement, antithetical statement, I should pronounce the word correctly, is that they will straw man the antithetical argument, as Sean is doing here, by saying, oh, it's all about thermic effect. That's our argument, that calories in, calories out doesn't work. No, Sean, that's one of tens of arguments that all add up together additively to completely render your um, position untenable, to 
to pound the very foundation stones of your theological castle to dust. And thermic effect of foods is just one argument. It's not the main argument, but it's one that is also just as valid as part of the reason why your fundamentally ridiculous calories in and calories out argument will not work, does not work, cannot work. Okay? So fail straight away. But let's hear you out. So let's just clarify something here right off the bat as far as the terminology goes. And that's that calories are constant units of energy. Okay. Now define energy then, Sean. Okay. Calorie is a definite fixed unit of energy, you say. Great. Define energy. And use an externally valid, verifiable, repeatable, operational definition of energy. Should we wait for that? I think not, actually. Energy, Sean, is a construct. It's an idea. It is not a thing with a literal existence in the way that matter has a literal existence. And I'm using those because it doesn't either. But that's for another day. That's not the point of this discussion. Energy is thought about, tossed around as a concept, as the motive for work, the motive force for work. So then you need to define force and you need to define work. And what you'll always find is that it comes back to being a circular, internally somewhat consistent, but by no means externally valid or consistent model of reality. So you're just throwing around concepts, basically. The thing that's tangible, the thing that's real, the thing that we can get our teeth into, quite literally, is matter. The stuff that has a, an actually perceived reality, an actual measurable phenomenon. We can weigh it. We can see what happens to it when we do things to it, work, but we can't see the work, which is what the energy is based around. We can't see the energy. We can't weigh the energy. Energy doesn't weigh, Sean. It has, it has no mass. Energy cannot have any impact on the mass balance of a human body. None at all, ever. Okay? Human body composition is a mass balance exercise. Mass in, mass out. Not energy in, energy out. Ergo, not calories in, calories out. We are done here. That's it. There's nothing else to say, but I will uh, expound and elaborate on things that Sean has to say as he says them, hopefully in a way that's accessible and useful to people. Do carry on, though, Sean. You're doing a great job, son. So just like a kilometer measures distance or pounds measure weight, calories measure energy. And so no, because energy is a construct and a kilometer is not a construct and neither is a pound in weight. The former is a set distance, provided that both people, if there are two people looking at that distance, are looking at that from within the same inertial frame, i.e. Einsteinian um, concepts of relativity need to be applied to that. Okay, to all intents and purposes, on a day-to-day -day basis, two people looking at the standard measure of one meter in a laboratory held in I think it's France somewhere, will agree, yes, that's what a meter is. And a thousand of those is a kilometer. An actual phenomenon, an actual thing. Energy, ethereal, uh, conceptual, constructural, not actually measurable. The thing that's measured, Sean, is not the energy. It's the temperature of a bath of water around a closed thermodynamic system, the bomb calorimeter. What we are measuring, in effect, is the kinetic activity, the movement of the molecules in that water. We are measuring 
movement, an actual thing, the movement of mass in a certain fashion, a certain distance, in a certain time, given that both observers are looking at it from the same inertial frame. That's the actual construct here. So we're not measuring energy at all. We're measuring kinetic activity. Okay, so keep that in mind. But the reality is that a calorie is a calorie no matter what food it's contained in. Yes, and that's why, one of the reasons why calories in, calories out is a falsehood, as that relates to the proposed utility of calories in, calories out as a tool to safely, sensibly, moderate in a predictable fashion one's body composition in, in the real world. It's, one, it's not the only answer though, it's not the only um, antithetical argument against calories in, calories out, Sean, it's only one. Different foods containing the exact same number of calories will not be processed by the human body in the same way and as such, in effect, the, if you're going to convert the actual energetic work done by changing the different um, forms of work, i.e. the effect of so-called energy, not the energy itself, remember, um, you're going to have to make adjustments. And then they're never done by people who are using calories in, calories out. Most of those people are incapable of making those adjustments. And as such, that's one of many, many reasons why a person who diligently records every so-called calorie they consume will get nowhere near the actual amount of work energy they have in effect consumed in their food in the form of mass, Sean, they will, they will be in error hugely. You cannot accurately track calories at home, boys and girls, in your own time. You need very, very complex equipment in a highly specialized laboratory with a team of PhDs to run that kit for you to get anywhere close the error around tracking your so-called calories in is so massive that the only way to use this so-called tool predictably in order to lose fat off your body, not weight by the way, fat in particular, is to vastly, hugely, grossly undereat in order to swamp that huge error to be sure that you will in fact get the so-called fat loss that you're looking for. That is neither sustainable nor sensible for your long-term health or indeed for your immediate health. That is a bad idea. You should not undertake that. And anyone that's telling you to use calorie tracking as a means to control your body composition does not understand human physiology, human health, the bioenergetics, of human cellular function or basic common sense of how to appropriately counsel a person to manage and control their body composition in a way that is sustainable, safe, long-term and medium-term for their health and likely to be 100% successful without the stress and distress of vastly grossly under eating in terms of the mass of food that you're taking in, thus leading to deficiencies and secondary health issues. Okay, right. Progress, Sean. You're doing a great job though, son. There's no such thing as calorie quality in the absolute sense. Because Correct. Which is one of the reasons why the tool is no good. One of the reasons. I think I've just made that quite clear though. All calories are exactly the same since they're preset units of energy. Yeah, which is a construct. What people really mean to say here, uh, or at least what I think they mean to say in most cases, is that not all foods are the same and that your body will process different foods differently depending on their nutrient profiles and their fiber content, which is... Which in effect is exactly the same thing, Sean, as saying a calorie 
while a calorie is always a calorie, its operational scientific definition is always the same, in effect, when you take foods in, if you're going to make the mistake in the first instance of viewing your food intakes as an energy intake, because that's a mistake, but if you're going to do that, in effect, the actual energy, in effect, that you derive from different foods, in effect, is not in line with the number of calories on the label. One of many reasons that is so is because of the thermic effect. One of the reasons, sure, not the reason. As if there was only one argument that, that blows the calories in, calories out thing out of the water. There are many, as I've said. Okay, carry on though. Is true. So 250 calories worth of chicken and broccoli will have a different effect on health and body composition and will be processed differently in comparison to say 250 calories worth of jelly beans. Fantastic. So now let's add another argument that the number of calories listed on the nutrition label of foods in every Western nation I'm aware of is allowed to be out in error on that label by up to 20% in either direction. So number one, if you don't understand exactly how different foods are dealt with differently by not only the human body, but yours in particular, because everyone's a little bit different, and you don't understand that the calories on the label might be 40% out range, 20% plus or minus the actual value in the foods in that packet, it's starting to look like calories in, calories out assessment is not going to be a great tool unless you are prepared to vastly, hugely, grossly undereat in terms of mass of food in order to achieve this um, repeatable, predictable pattern of mass loss in the form of fat that we might expect which, as I've already outlined, is a stupid thing to do. Okay? I think we're done with calories in, calories out. Less than two minutes into your video, Sean. But you're not done with it, and I know you're not done with it, because you continue to parrot this ridiculous pseudoscientific nonsense with authority, inappropriate authority, because you actually are stunningly ignorant of the facts concerning this particular field of endeavor, Sean. You have no business talking about this to the public at all, frankly. And I'm sure that you're going to continue to completely ignore this unassailable argument that I'm proposing here, and you're going to continue to, con to, to mindlessly parrot this nonsense for as long as people will pay you to do it. It's disgraceful. But anyway, carry on, and we'll continue to put it right. The chicken and broccoli um, is going to be more micronutrient dense, higher in fiber. Um, it'll provide protein for muscle recovery and growth. Uh, it'll be more satiating. It'll have a higher thermic effect. So the calories are the same, but the food they're packaged up in is different. Ergo, in effect, if you're going to make the mistake of converting your mass intake, your food mass intake, to energy, which it isn't, it's still mass, okay? <laughs> Then you have to make those adjustments if you're going to be accurate about the amount of calories you have effectively consumed. Nobody does that, ergo, that adds to the error. That adds to that 40%, uh, you know, 20% either way error that already exists. Whoops. Oh dear. And that will affect how your body handles those calories once they're taken in. So that's just something to keep in mind here because if someone tries to tell you that not all calories are equal or a calorie is not a calorie, then you already know right there that they don't fully understand what they're talking about on this issue. Okay, well, that's projection, Sean, because it's absolutely patent and unequivocal to anybody with any sense at all, actually, that the person here who does not fully grasp the reality of and the science underpinning this area is the bloke that you will see in the mirror. Okay? Sorry about that. You're, you're playing semantics and ignoring reality. And I guess you're doing it in order to subserve your bank balance rather than to help people. Because if you genuinely wanted to help people, 
you would actually drop the ego and you'd come and listen to someone like myself who can educate you on this topic and put you right where you're wrong. But I'm guessing you're not going to do that because that wouldn't subserve your bank balance. Hmm. And then the second big error people make is that because certain foods are processed differently within the body and can have differing effects on body composition and overall health, they'll then make this massive leap into saying that calories don't matter. No. Okay, that's a straw man. And what you're doing is minimizing the antithetical argument by suggesting that we only have one point, that being the thermic effect of food. And that's not our point. That's one of, as I said earlier, tens of points that we can make which all add up additionally additively to further reduce the accuracy with which any given person at home in their own time could possibly even track their effective calories if they did everything correct according to textbook weighing recording and measuring everything they still will not get remotely anywhere close to the actual effect of so-called energy that, the, that that person has consumed in any given period of time. And that's before we even look at the not only difficulties, but in fact impossibility of measuring how many calories you have expended because of the errors, the insensible losses, all of that kind of stuff that's involved in that. That's for a whole nother video. So neither calories in nor calories out are remotely a possibility for any person at home in their own time to measure remotely accurately enough to use as a tool, except with the caveat that the only way to use it predictably is to vastly, grossly, hugely under eat for an extended period of time. Bad idea. We are done with calories in, calories out. It is not the approach that a person ought to use to, to moderate their body composition. Okay? And that calories in versus calories out is somehow irrelevant. It's because it is. Totally irrelevant as a utilitarian tool that anyone would use within the realms of common sense and safety. We are done. No amount of saying it's still valid makes that so, Sean. It, it isn't. Sorry. We are done with that. The argument is over. The discussion should also be over, but it won't be. I suppose that gives me something to do. Carry on, Sean. Again, it is true that certain foods will have different effects uh, within your body in terms of how they affect overall fat loss. But the way that food quality impacts this is still primarily a result of how it influences net energy balance. So No. Human body composition is not an energy balance issue at all. It is a mass balance issue. This has been established. This has been published in the peer-reviewed literature as a fact. It is yet to be refuted by anybody. We are still waiting. Your body consists, Sean, of matter, things with mass, atoms of matter, things that interact with the Higgs field. Ergo have mass, ergo are things in our day-to-day -day perception. Your mass overall of your body is made up in several components, if you'd like to think of it that way. Water, which is most of it, probably up to 65% in most people. Okay? The weight of your skeleton, the atoms within that. The weight of your musculature, such that that may be. The weight of your viscera, your connective tissues, etc. Okay? Each one of those components of your overall mass can be moderated upwards or downwards, independently of the other ones, depending which control lever you pull in order to achieve those things. And the only way to change the amount of mass in any one of those components, any one of those pulls of your total mass, is to change the amount of mass in it, not the energy in it. 
mass form. There's no way around this. Considering the mass of your food as energy simply makes no sense. It's an obfuscation of reality. It's a level of abstraction and complexity that is totally unnecessary and ill-advised. Okay? We are beings of mass. We are made of mass. Mass in, mass out is the sum you need, not energy in, energy out. Okay? I hope this is going up some flagpoles finally. It's still impacting the total calories your body is absorbing versus... Okay, absorbing calories, you say, Sean. Absorbing calories. Okay. What is a calorie in terms of as a physical phenomenon? Well, it isn't a physical phenomenon. It's a construct. It's an idea about the motive force required to cause a kinetic activity, motion, change in a bath of water around a bomb calorimeter. And nothing else. That's how it is defined. That is how it is measured. That is what it is. Okay? So to suggest that you are absorbing those, when in fact what you're absorbing when you eat food is matter, mass, water, carbohydrates, fats, amino acids, proteins, um, micronutrients, bits and bobs, fiber, alcohol, those things which nominally the body can chemically react to use some of the Gibbs free energy from those chemical reactions in order to form ATP, the energy currency of the cells. It's, it's mass, Sean. It, it's, it's not matter. How, I mean, in effect, what is it that causes the change in motion of those atoms of water? Well, it's photons of a certain wavelength interacting, having been released by the combustion, the rapid combustion of the food in the bomb calorimeter. That releases photons outwards. Those photons interact with the water surrounding that system and the, those interactions between those photons striking those molecules of water cause rotations, vibrations, and translations. Okay? Photons weigh how much, Sean? No mass. They don't interact with the Higgs field. Energy doesn't weigh. Energy in the form of a calorie, photons, has no mass whatsoever. So it cannot change your mass. Either the absorption and retention of some of the mass in that food and the excretion of the rest, the balance between absorption and excretion of mass, that's the thing that changes any one of those components of your overall mass, ergo your body composition, not energy. Okay? Goodness gracious, this isn't difficult to understand, I would have thought. The total calories that it's expending. Uh, for example, protein has a higher thermic effect in comparison to carbohydrates or fats, meaning that your body has to expend more calories in order to digest it. So if you eat 100 calories worth of chicken versus 100 calories worth of sugar, your body will have to- You're still not expending calories or absorbing calories. It's still mass. Okay? The only calories that are being expended would be the insensible loss of heat to entropy of your body. That's the only um, thing that you could actually pin down as being a calorie. Uh, and that doesn't get anywhere near what the human body does, because the human body is an open thermodynamic system. It exchanges work and it exchanges mass. It's open. 
we're done with thermodynamics being applicable. It's not, because the first law of thermodynamics explicitly demands that its tenets are conditional upon the system at hand under consideration being thermodynamically closed, i.e. unable to exchange mass. Go and look up thermodynamics. Learn. Burn more calories to digest the chicken. So it's literally affecting the calories out portion of the equation. The same thing goes for fiber. If you eat a higher fiber diet, you actually end up absorbing a lower amount of calories from your protein and fat intake. And so in this case, the calories in portion of the equation is being affected. All you're doing is repeating one of the many reasons why calories in, calories out as a tool to maintain or achieve body composition change is totally ill-advised, ill-educated, and um, in fact dangerous, both short and long term, and should never, ever be attempted. All you're doing, Sean, is pointing directly to your incompetence to counsel people in this field. Okay? Please stop. So yes, the total calories you're consuming on paper is not the whole story, uh, because 100 You are not consuming any calories. That would mean that photons from somewhere are being absorbed by the body, and the implication is and that the energetic change in the atoms, the kinetic change in the atoms of our bodies are somehow being used for metabolic process, having somehow captured those photons from somewhere. That's not what happens in a human body. We are not absorbing calories, okay? Calories worth of one food might act differently in your body versus 100 calories of another food. Yeah, so you're repeating the same argument that you've already made, which only actually backs me up, Sean, and not you. Okay, fine. But at the same time, keep in mind that the way those foods impact fat loss differently once they're actually in your body is still by affecting the total calories your body is absorbing. Okay, so what you're saying is calories in, calories out is nonsense. Here's why, but it still isn't. It's incredible. The cognitive dissonance that must be required of a person to, with a straight face and with authority and confidence, make such a ridiculous claim as the two claims that you're making here in subsequent sentences, which are absolutely, without any question, mutually exclusive. Calories in, calories out is nonsense. Correct. But it still isn't? Incorrect. No, it still is. Okay? Versus how many it's expending. And so net energy balance is still the ultimate bottom line here. And to say that- No, it isn't. It's still a mass balance. You still measure your body on a scale according to the effect of the pseudo force of gravity on that mass on a weighing scale or you still assess the mass of fat via various wildly inaccurate methodologies like skin folds or, or, or that kind of thing, mostly, or measurements even. You still can get at body composition, again, fairly inaccurately using biometric impedance scales, which are fairly cheap for home use these days, although wildly inaccurate, let's be fair. These are, these are all assessments of mass, not energy. Now, I know mass is a form of energy, absolutely, in a, in a condensed form. But to all intents and purposes, on a day-to-day -day basis in our everyday experience, mass and energy, while being interconvertible, both theoretically and in practice, we've seen it done, doesn't happen day-to-day. Okay, so body mass, body composition is a mass balance activity exercise, unequivocally. There is no logical escape from this. None at all. Calories don't matter or that calories in versus calories out. Again, that's a straw man suggesting that our position is calories don't matter. That's 
a gross oversimplification and actually it's a distortion of what the argument is here. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is calories are neither the appropriate tool to use in order to manage your intakes, neither are they remotely accurate, even if you do absolutely everything textbook right to, to be accurate about how many of those proposed units of some construct or whatever that you are supposedly taking in. Further to that, what we're suggesting is even if you could accurately measure your so-called calories in, which you can't, neither can you measure how many you've spent, used, remotely either. The whole idea is stupid. Absolutely, fundamentally ridiculous. Will not work unless what you're actually doing in practice is hugely, hugely underdoing the mass of food you're intaking while maintaining an inappropriate balance of macronutrients in order to achieve this fat loss. The actual answer is to correct the macronutrient intake, which will take care of several other interrelated factors like the inflammatory zone, the hormonal responses, the endocrine system responses, hunger and satiety signaling in such a way as that the actual mass you do in effect take in will self-correct as well and as a function of that so will your body composition back to your natural genetic ideal body composition without exercise at all in fact additionally. Amazing isn't it? That's the answer, not starving yourself. Okay? Simple. Eat a, excuse me, <clears throat> simple. Eat a species appropriate, species specific diet. Rest and repeat. Not starve yourself, trying to stay under a mythical, magical, so called energy level, which you can't get anywhere near gauging. Okay? Real easy. Is irrelevant, is just flat out incorrect. No, it's not. Still, what's flat out incorrect, Sean, is that you are competent to speak publicly on this issue. You're not. At all. When it all comes down to it, fat is a stored form of energy. No, it's a stored form of mass, in effect, because there's no way that it can be converted to energy. The energy contained in the mass of fat, actually, Sean, is equal to, get this, the mass, whatever that is, multiplied by the speed of light squared. Okay? Give or take. That's a lot. Example, um, the so-called energy, or the energy, an actual effect, contained in a teaspoon of sugar, if converted to energy, would, Sean, be equal to about five or six times the power of the bomb dropped on Nagasaki in August of 1945. It's equivalent to over a hundred million tons of TNT being oxidized rapidly, immediately, to all intents and purposes. Okay? Your, your fat is never converted to energy. It's not a, in effect, in practice, it is not a stored form of energy. It's a condensed form of energy which will remain condensed. What will happen to it when your body uses it for metabolic process is that that fat will be chemically interacted with oxygen to simplify the whole thing right down to its base components. And the interaction of that fat with oxygen will produce some H2O, which is still mass, and some CO2, which is still mass. And what will happen is that your body will maintain some of that water in order to have the homeostasis of the of the hydration status of that body, the rest will be excreted at some point 
in some fashion, either in the urine or the sweat or tears or vapor at the lungs, for example. And the CO2 will be breathed out at the lungs according to its concentration gradient as that relates to the specific capacitance for CO2 of the human body at any given instant in time. So what happens is the mass is converted to different forms of mass, not energy, and then that mass is lost to the body in different ways and in different forms at different times with different time scales. Very difficult to measure. Okay, As a function of that reaction of fat with oxygen, there is a release of Gibbs free energy, which is encapsulated by another two molecules, really, those being adenosine diphosphate and an inorganic phosphate molecule, and those are jammed together to form an ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. All mass interactions, not energy. Okay? No energy is released. No energy is created or destroyed. These are mass balance interactions. Okay? Cool. And the way you stimulate your body to release that fat for energy is by creating an energy deficit where the amount of energy that is available from the food you're eating is less than what your body requires. Now, once again, the, the signal that causes the body to react in such a way as to upregulate the oxidation of fat is a lack of, of what we'll call potential energy containing substrates in the form of mass in the blood and in the cell fluids. It's that to which the body reacts, not energy. Mass balances, still. Okay? The fuel itself throughout the day. If that's the case, then your body will break down its existing fat stores to obtain a source of energy. No, to obtain a source of mass, another source of mass, well, three other sources of mass. Those being adenosine triphosphate, H2O, and CO2, all mass. Okay? And on the other hand, if the amount of available energy from the food you're eating meets or exceeds the energy demands of your body, then your body has no incentive to break. Mass demands of your body, not energy demands, mass still down its fat stores because the energy need is already being met. So all of what we've talked about so far uh, is partly a confusion in terminology that I want. No, it's clear who's confused here, Sean. It's really, really clear which one of us is confused and which one is not. I want to clear up, and it's partly a basic misunderstanding of how calories in versus calories out actually works. But, well, it doesn't. We've clarified that, I think, in this video, as well as in many others I've made on my fine channel over the last five years or so. But how do we tie this all together in the practical sense? Well, first off... Well, what we do is we stop considering one's body composition as an energy in, energy out exercise, because it isn't. And we understand that it is in fact a mass balance activity, and we act accordingly. We understand that our mass conservation of our body in the various pools in our body are affected by the amount of mass that comes in, the interaction of that with our inflammasome, our hormonal systems, our endocrine systems, and a bunch of other things which affect the interactions chemically, physically, that occur between those molecules in our body while they're in our body. Are they stored in some form? Are they excreted in some form? And that will give us the mass balance. So what we do is we base our diet around it being made up in the correct form, i.e. a species-appropriate, species-specific, ancestrally consistent form, and we allow our bodies to take over the responsibility once that sets in and everything re-equilibrates as it should according to our genetic design, such that our hunger signaling and satiety signaling is allowed to come back online and to be re-equilibrated and accurate in such a way as we never have to record or measure anything ever. The only thing we need to keep an eye on is, is the makeup of my diet what it should be? Really easy. No computer programs, no recording software, no weighing, no measuring, 
No thought process really of any kind except, is my diet made up correctly? And am I listening to the body signals that my body's giving me about when I should eat and when I should stop? That's it. Nothing else. Exercise is optional and additional in terms of body composition. Exercise can have fantastic effects, short, medium and long term, so long as it's appropriate exercise undertaken and planned appropriately by an appropriately qualified practitioner such as myself with regard to the makeup of exercise programs. But it's not required to maintain ideal body composition. You cannot outrun a bad diet and shouldn't try. And further to that, on the flip side, if you have to exercise to maintain your body composition, then your diet is wrong. Period. We're done. And it's halfway through Sean's little video here. I think we've put it to bed. But anyway, let's hear what, because I always do, let's hear him out entirely from start to finish. And, uh, and we'll correct anything else that's wrong in the second half. Stick around. Even if people who argue against calories in versus calories out are using the wrong terminology. And We're not, Sean, you are. In some cases, there is some truth to what they're saying. It's Again, entirely true. Calories in, calories out. Stupid. Pointless. Ineffective. Um, if maintained within a safe range of under eating, basically. Not a good idea. We're done. Again, not all foods act the same way in the body. It's just repetition of the same point you've already made, which actually undercuts the validity and utility of calories in, calories out as a tool, yes? And so 2,000 calories on paper from one combination of foods will not necessarily produce the same fat burning effect as 2,000 calories on paper from a different combination. Correct. Fine. Let's move on. However, and this is the important part, this is only true up to a limited degree. In other words, you can only use quote unquote food quality to positively influence fat loss up to a certain point. That's false, Sean. Simply not true. Who told you that? Where did you get that from? Simply not true. And once you hit that point, then it really is just about managing your calories on paper. No, it still isn't. It's still a mass balance issue. And it's still, the outcome of all of this is still dependent on inflammasome, endocrine system, hormonal system, massive food in, massive food out, not energy, still. So if your diet is really poorly structured, you're eating low protein, low fiber. Low fiber is not a bad diet. There is, no, there is no place in the human diet for fiber. It's not required. It's not useful. It's not a good idea. Um, it's centered around calorie-dense, high-fat, high-sugar foods that don't fill you up. You aren't weight training. Well, see, high sugar and high fat together, that's a problem, isn't it, Sean? Randall cycle. Look that thing up. And then you go ahead and fix those issues. So uh, you start basing your diet around minimally processed whole foods. You're getting... But that's not a good idea. That's not a, an improvement. There's plant material there, Sean. The human diet shouldn't contain plant material at all. None. At least 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. More like one than 0 0.8, but okay. Daily, uh, you start eating more vegetables and more... Bad idea. That, that won't help you with your body composition necessarily. It'll probably interfere with it, actually, in a, in a negative way. High fiber foods, you start... That's a bad idea. High fiber is a bad idea, yeah. Weight training, yes, that alone will help you lose fat in the initial stages, probably without you even needing to track your calories at all. A lot of... You never need to track calories ever, and you shouldn't even attempt it because you can't get anywhere near doing it, even if you really are very, very careful. We've covered this. That is because you'll just be eating fewer calories by default since less processed foods tend to contain fewer calories relative to their volume. And it's also partly because the overall composition of your diet is going to be more favorable. That's because of the... Yeah, but if you're eating foods which contain more water, then there's less mass of food and more mass of water. So yes, you're eating less mass. And it's still a mass balance exercise for your body composition. It still isn't anything to do with energy in the form of photons. It's, it's still mass. Okay? This is really straightforward, Sean. I really can't understand why you're struggling with this quite so much. 
higher thermic effect of the protein, the fiber, possibly certain hormonal adjustments from optimizing your micronutrient intake. And then if you start weight training on top of that, more calories are gonna be diverted to your muscle tissue as well. No, it's not about calories still. When you undertake exercise, your body converts more fats and carbohydrates to carbon dioxide plus water, which is still mass. And it's those which are excreted at the lungs, through the skin, through the tear ducts, in the feces, in the urine, etc. Still mass, still not energy. Okay? So in that sense, by simply improving your food quality, you end up losing fat. Sure. But if you continue to improve your food quality still further than that which would be suggested by Sean Nalawani as being a good food intake, because he has no idea what that is, if you got rid of all that plant material and went to a species-appropriate, species-specific and ancestrally consistent diet, you would find still further improvements again in your normal, natural management and maintenance of your body composition according to your genetically ideal state okay nothing to do with calories still however once your diet is already relatively clean yeah but you don't know what that is sean you've got that wrong you've just pointed to how you've got that so badly wrong humans should not consume plants for energy so-called for nutrition so-called the role of plants as they relate to humans is Medicinal, nutraceutical, not nutritional. Okay. Has that balanced macronutrient breakdown in place? There's really not much else you can do in terms of manipulating food quality. Well, there is, Sean, because there's a lot of room to improve the diet you've just put forward as being ideal. A vast improvement is possible. You just don't understand what that is or why someone should do that because you are incompetent in this field continue losing more fat. The improvement in food quality will help you out at the start. And at the finish as well, if you do it correctly. And you will not do it correctly if you rely on Sean Nalawani for your advice on how to do that correctly, because he will lead you up the garden path and tell you to eat lots of fiber and plants. Not a good idea, Sean. But when your fat loss eventually stalls, at that point- it Which it will on the diet that you propose as being ideal, Sean. Okay is just about managing your calorie no it still isn't no it's still a mass balance issue and how your intake of mass interacts with those systems that i've already outlined still it versus your calorie expenditure no nothing to do with calorie expenditure how do you expend a calorie you can't absorb them any more than you can expend them sean okay Paper. And, and if you were absorbing calories and expending calories, given that they are in the form of photons, which have no mass, they weigh nothing, they don't interact with the Higgs field, no amount of calories in, nor any amount of calories out will affect your mass because they have none. God's sake, this isn't hard, is it? Am I the only one that thinks this is difficult somehow? Incredible. I mean, if it's all about eating clean and your fat loss plateaus, what do you do then? You know, you can only keep eating cleaner for so long before it isn't practical or before it isn't even possible anymore. So improving... Yeah, but if you do eat appropriately, then your body composition will, within a reasonable period of time, be optimized. Job's done. Just continue doing that. You don't need to continue to improve beyond optimal, do you? But then it's maintenance. Keep eating that way and you'll keep getting that result. What's your problem, son? on your food choices is ultimately a game of diminishing returns until it eventually has no return at all. Yeah, and that's at the point where things will be optimized if you do everything correctly. Goodness sake. Now this doesn't necessarily mean you have to track every single calorie you eat. You never should try and track any calories ever. No. Four hours a day, seven days a week, though I do think most people should be tracking to some degree at well, least. Well, that just shows your incompetence, Sean. That shows your inability to understand that they will not be able to do so. It is impossible. It's in the beginning stages, but the bottom line is that you do have to be in a calorie deficit to lose. No, still, it's still a mass balance exercise. Nothing to do with calories, still. 
do have to burn more calories than you consume overall. You can't, how do you burn a photon, Sean? Photons don't burn. Burning is the oxidation of matter, mass, usually by, inter by reacting it with oxygen. Although it doesn't have to be oxygen, it can be any oxidative agent or oxidating, oxidizing agent, I should say. Okay? And that's not what the human body does. <laughs> Goodness sake. How do you burn a photon? They don't interact with oxygen. And for most people, a good sweet spot to aim for is going to be about 300 to 500 calories below maintenance per day. See, vastly, grossly, hugely under eating in order to swamp the huge, massive errors that, that are going to be attendant in your attempt to track these so-called calories. How long do you have to keep doing that for, Sean? And how will that affect your health overall? other than badly, irresponsible, dangerous, contraindicated, misanthropic advice from a charlatan. Okay. So to sum up everything we've covered, both your calorie intake on paper and the quality of the foods you eat matter for fat loss. Um, and certainly- No, only the latter. And that plate of so-called food that's on the screen right now is not an example of how you should eat. That is very, very poor, extremely poor. Matter for overall health, for gym performance, uh, muscle growth, etc. And you should focus on both. It's not one or the other. However, when it comes to the goal of losing body fat, it really ultimately does come down to creating a calorie deficit. With no, it doesn't. That's a bad idea. That's bad advice. We've covered the reasons why. False. It's nothing to do with calories at all. Sean, look. Here's an example. In the first two months of 2022, I changed my body mass in a downward direction. I lost weight by 15 pounds in that two months. Not two months, two weeks, the first two weeks I'm talking about, not the first two months, goodness gracious, the first two weeks, 14 days, 15 pounds. How did I do that? Did I do that by consuming less calories? Well, no, because during those two weeks, Sean, I consumed six to six and a half thousand calories every one of those 14 days okay my usual baseline intake is around about the 1800 calories mark if i'm using calories to measure my my intakes which i would never do so vast huge relative increase in the amount of so-called calories i took into my body over two weeks every day for two weeks 15 pounds lighter after that explain that to me We will be waiting all day for a reasonable explanation, Sean. It will not work according to your paradigm. It's impossible according to your false, demonstrably false, clearly false paradigm. It is time to drop this ridiculous charade. Okay? We are done. But you still are not. Carry on, son. You're doing a great job. In your body. That calorie deficit can be partly influenced by your food choices and your macronutrient breakdown, but this is only true up to a limited point. If you had a calorie deficit in effect, that would mean that you would have a deficit of the ability to release calories because you'd have a deficit of calories coming in. Ergo, your body temperature would have to change because temperature of atoms is the only thing that can be thought of as a calorie. All the other interactions are all mass balance interactions, sure. You'd be hypo hypothermic if you had a calorie deficit in effect. That doesn't happen. Sorry about that. Point. And once you have a decent, nutrient-rich whole food diet in place... Yeah, you don't know what that is, though, Sean. You, people need to come to me and people that understand what I understand to get the right advice on that. They will not get the right advice from you. Calories in versus calories out is still the name of the game. No, it still isn't, Sean. Doesn't matter how many times you say it still is, it still isn't. Okay? No matter what. And no, that... <laughs> saying no matter what doesn't change the reality that what you've just said is false. No matter what. 
it is wrong, shown demonstrably. You are in the wrong, you are incompetent, and you need to pull your head in. There's no way out of this for you. That's where your focus should be. If no, it shouldn't. Your focus should be on correcting the makeup of your diet and letting your body re-equilibrate equilibrate and readjust such that your satiety signaling and hunger signaling will take over control of that to the optimal level over time. Thus, your body composition will optimize itself over time. No tracking, no counting, no measuring, no weighing, none of that. Okay? Want to maximize your results over the long term. If you found the tips here helpful and you... No, Sean. Not at all. What we found was... A young man who was really, really battling, who was really struggling with several very serious issues in his life. Ego issues. Okay? I don't know what it is that makes you think you're competent to speak on this topic publicly when it is absolutely unequivocal, it is clear and patent to anyone that understands reality and physics that you are not competent, you have no idea what you're talking about in this regard, and you should stop for all time. You should never make another video on this topic, and you should take down every video you have ever made where you suggest that calories in, calories out is the name of the game, because, son, it isn't. Still. Okay? You want to learn exactly how to bring this all together? And if you want to learn how to bring your body composition together, correctly, safely, in a way that won't destroy your health long term, speak to someone that understands that. And while Sean has a good physique himself, while he undertakes training himself, physical training that promotes his body having that physique, that doesn't mean that what he is doing is optimal. That's a false series of leaps of faith. Okay? Now, if you want to take the word of Sean Nelawani over myself, having watched this entire video through and considered what I've actually said fully and completely, mulled it over and tried to find any flaw with what I've had to say, and you still want to follow Sean, you go ahead and do that. That is your funeral. That's Darwin in action. If, however, you understand, having watched this video, that Sean is completely wrong and his advice is dangerous and contraindicated and stupid, then I will have gained your sub. And you will unsub from Sean's channel and you'll stop watching his videos and listening to his nonsense. Because that's the only way the message will get through to the boy. Okay? So, get that done. Uh, in the meantime, let's see how Sean's going to continue to summarize. Was of an actual step-by-step -step eating plan. So yeah, don't follow an eating plan from Sean. He has no idea, clearly. The amount of calories you need. No, you don't need calories any calories. You need to look at how your food is made up, and then the total mass that you consume will take care of itself. Satiety signaling and hunger signaling. The macronutrient breakdown, recommended food choices, and other... Well, you don't have the skills to recommend foods, Sean. You don't have that knowledge. You've got that wrong. Details so that you can lose fat and gain muscle as effectively as possible, then make sure to take my physique quiz over... Oh, God, really? Seriously? No quizzes required, boys and girls. No quiz of any kind. We're at quiz.seannow.com because that'll get you started with not just the proper nutrition plan. No, it won't get you started with proper nutrition at all. Nothing Sean has to say will lead you down the right path of nutrition. He has no idea on that at all. But also the proper training plan for you based on your specific goals, body type, and experience level. You can click up here. For well, that. he may know something about training, but he certainly doesn't know anything about human physiology bioenergetics or nutrition okay or use the link in the description box below when it comes to proper supplementation you can also visit com to check out my research backed no bs formulas to help fully streamline your program <sighs> really seriously no i wouldn't be doing that either optimize your overall results the link for that is also in the description and as always make sure to hit that like button leave a comment down below yeah i would suggest that you should hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel frankly subscribe if you haven't already in order to stay in the loop on all of my latest content thanks for watching
watching guys and i'll see you in the next video no i, I think you probably won't actually there you go boys and girls there it is once again um yes yeah, incredible by which i mean completely lacking in credibility of any kind sean stop seriously stop all right um but before you stop perhaps you should contact me for a face-to-face -face debate on this that'll be fun uh, we'll do it live on both channels at the same time it'll get huge numbers right um all right see you next time when someone will be wrong on the interwebs hope you enjoyed this hope you got something out of it do smash the like button studies show that failure to hit the like button is the single biggest cause of obesity Make it so. See you then. Ciao for now.